Okay. So the question is, is Christina's conjecture correct? So we need to take this data, put it into a table, sorry, into a graph, and then look at the graphs and try to understand uh, if her hypothesis or conjecture is correct. As you can see, it's actually quite the opposite. Okay. What happens is actually as people are making uh, more money, their donation amount is going down. Okay. So therefore, uh, her conjecture is incorrect. Incorrect. And we base that on, of course, the data. Matthew. Can you just tell if she's right? You could, yeah. But you might not get such a clear cut, uh, such a clear cut example. Okay, so it's important that you that you do graph it. Okay, Matthew. All right. There was a point about. There was one point that uh, that stood out over here. Uh, this point again. We talked a little bit about this uh, last class. It's an outlier. Okay. And when we have a big outlier like this, we don't consider it in the line of best fit. It's almost completely ignored. Okay, it's important to note that. that based on one point, you're not going to redraw this into some sort of curve of best fit. Okay, if the data is consistently and it's pretty compact, but there's one point that's way out there, uh, it's pretty much ignored. Because it's, uh, it's an outlier. It's an extreme case. All right, the next example. Uh, Allison's conjecture, heart rate is lower for larger animals. So we have a bunch of animals up here. Uh, they're measured by their size, so in kilograms here. And then their heart rate is measured. Okay. So again, our independent variable would be our mass. Okay, because we're measuring the resting heart rate and we're choosing the animal to, to, uh, to test. Okay, so choosing the mass would be down here and then measuring our resting heart rate would be our dependent variable. All right, so we get this sort of data that's really high at first and then it kind of lowers. So we're going to want to draw some sort of curve of best fit here. Like that. Okay. So then the question says, is her heart rate lower for larger animals true or not? So what do you guys think? Uh, yeah. So you're right. It looks like it definitely is because these are the bigger animals and it's lower than the smaller animals. But I would say that there's really not a lot of data here. Okay. So you could argue kind of either way. You could argue either that she's correct or that there's just not enough data. Okay, really to make that make that call, make that decision. Okay. So not everything is going to be ideal and, and clear cut, such as this example. There's going to be scenarios where, you know, really you would need to take more data. Yeah. You could possibly get the mark both ways if you if your reasoning is correct. Okay. So it's not always one answer. All right. So if Daniel argued this, you know, saying that this person's heart rate, and you know, and stressed that that these are much heavier, it's a possibility that you both could get marks. Okay. All right, example four. Final example, we have grade nine math marks versus the age. So Derek's conjecture is that mark, your mark is related to your age. Does the data support? So we can see the data is all over the place. So in this particular example, we could say that there's no relation. Okay, and the reason why is because you can't draw any sort of curve or line of best fit because the data is just scattered all over the place. All right. So in this particular example, does the data support? The answer again would be no. Okay. It does not support this conjecture. So in summary, you can support or reject conjecture based on patterns and data. All right. So very again, very similar to yesterday, we saw a little, couple of different things, a couple of different pattern trends, uh, but for the most part, uh, a little bit of a review on yesterday's lesson or last lesson. All right. Any questions? Okay. So that's it.